Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Rachel and today I want to talk to you about work. And more specifically than that, I want to talk to you about remote work and how we actually accomplish this on the road. So I have been working remotely for over six months now, majority of which has been done from this van. And a lot of people are curious about that, like how does it actually work, what's our internet setup, what's like the fundamentals of actually running a successful career in a very small space and organising my life around the chaos that is not only life but also van life, which can be incredibly unpredictable. So in this video I'm going to take you through things like our internet setup, like how I actually organise my life to be able to successfully work from here, how it works with two dogs, two humans and a full-time job, and how I actually do things like take meetings and have enough power on my laptop and all of these basics which are actually quite important when it comes around to successfully being able to maintain a career while living on the roads. I think we should start with talking about internet because that is the fundamental to <laughs> everything else that I'm going to talk to you about today and internet was one of the things that also took us like a little bit of time to get right we definitely didn't get this right straight away so now what we have is a Nighthawk M5 router which sits on the ceiling up here that is connected to a pointing antenna which is up on the roof this combination has been a combination that works we generally get a signal on Kevlar with even like the slightest bit of mobile signal that's around. Obviously that isn't always strong enough to work and we very much are directed by the upload speed and the download speed that actually is available. But another question here is what do you actually need internet wise to be able to work? So generally I found that I can do things like take video meetings and skip everything in my day done with a minimum of about like three megabits per second upload speed and download speed of about let's say six megabits per second upwards that is like the bare minimum that i would be comfortable with to do a day of work but what we generally find with our setup is that we have 20 megabits per second upload speed and at least 40 megabits per second download speed which is absolutely fine with that kind of speed i can work and cam can stream we can both be very much doing our thing with no restrictions on like the bandwidth or on each other. Are your dogs fighting? Are you trying to play? Are you trying to play with Odin when he's sleeping? This is a quite nice sidestep into my next uh, problem. We have a puppy. <laughs> Thank you for your paw. That was so nice. Come here. Come here. So working with a puppy in the van, along with a husky, who's also known for being very vocal, has been a challenge. But one that we've got around with a little bit of training and a lot of patience and love from Cam as well. So basically when I'm on meetings, there's a lot of things you can do to make sure that you're not having this go on. I would generally either make sure that they've just had their exercise or they've just had a walk and they're happy to chill or they can be given something like an enrichment activity like a kong with peanut butter inside it or something else along that vein which is just gonna keep them quiet and separate and not playing come on come down worst case scenario if we don't have like an enrichment activity for them or they've not been able to have a walk yet maybe the weather's shite then Cam will entertain and keep puppies quiet while I'm on my call, um, which is generally max about an hour at a time. So obviously that can be quite exhausting for him if he's left in that situation, but it's pretty rare nowadays when we haven't managed to plan our life well enough for the dogs to be able to actually, yeah, I guess, chill. <laughs> Heimdall is getting much better at knowing when to stay in his place and in his bed as well. And, and obviously that's a big winner. Another thing that I want to talk to you about is also the planning that surrounds it. Like, how do you actually plan your day when life is mighty unpredictable and you don't know if you're going to have internet and you've got meetings to commit to, you've got dogs that need work you need to eat and be a human being. I find all of that very overwhelming. And I guess a lot of people might look at that and think, yeah, that's like a job, Rachel. But I find it quite a lot and it's taken me a while to find a style of planning that actually allows me to be my 
most productive self not only cope but like excel and what i do now is time block so the fundamentals of time blocking is basically taking your day and just breaking down your tasks into set blocks of hours so the way that i approach my work day is basically looking at my calendar in the morning and blocking out anything like set meetings on my planner so if i have a meeting that's already booked in that will be blocked out with my planner immediately the next step will then to be scheduling in things like dog walks so i'll take a dog walk go and block it out for an hour lunch i'll go and block it out for an hour and just set up my calendar in that way so at the beginning of my day i know what meetings i have to take i know what things i have to get done and around that you can then put in the breakdown of the smaller tasks or projects that you're working towards Obviously, another barrier to work can potentially be you wake up and there's, there's no internet. We've had that happen a few times. The general planning of our lives revolves around getting internet. We will move to a spot in the evening, check the internet strength, check the connection stable, and then we will go to sleep and I can wake up for work feeling peaceful the next day. It's happened a few times where we've woken up the next morning and the internet's dropped off a cliff. I cannot tell you why, it's very stressful for me. So in the morning, the first thing I'll do before we have a coffee is just do a quick speed test again, just to make sure that we actually still have consistent internet where we're parked. Generally, we're fine. And it's all good, I can hop on my morning meetings and that's great. But if not, we always leave ourselves about at least half an hour to be able to just move down the road and find somewhere else that's got internet. There's a lot of other ways that allow you to prepare in advance for stuff like this as well. So you can also prepare by looking at signal maps and just making sure that the like color <laughs> of the area you're in is like compatible with actually getting a decent mobile signal. Obviously, in terms of traveling, this also has limited our travel plans. So we had to skip out almost the entirety of the west coast of the NC500 purely because there wasn't enough signal there for us to get work done. We just we just couldn't do it. So I guess when you're living this life and when you're actually committing to work online on the road, you do need to be aware that you can't just park anywhere. I guess unless maybe you have like a Starlink setup or something like that. But at least for us, it's uh, it is a limiting factor in where we choose to travel. Although the sides of the west coast of the NC500, we really have never had trouble staying in like the rough area that we wanted to stay in. Um, so there's a note of optimism, even with the setup that we've got, relying on like phone signal towers and things like that, it's absolutely fine. You can, you can live the life you want to live and, and do it nicely. Can't wait. Hello again. It is now the next day and ironically yesterday I had to go back to work rather than filming the video. So <laughs> um, hello again and I'm going to pick this up by going back in to talk about power. So obviously power is another huge component to actually being able to work full time. I have a laptop that needs charging daily, if not twice a day sometimes, if it's a heavy meeting day. So first off, laptop like make is something I'd really emphasise if this is something you're looking to do. Because you will need something that isn't too juicy on the battery, like something that actually lasts quite a long time. And that was one of my priorities when getting this, as well as a nice big like 17 inch screen, just so I can actually lay out my work nicely. I used to be a two monitor in the office person. So going from that to a laptop is quite tricky, but a bigger screen made that easier and a longer battery life also makes that easier. But regardless of battery life, it obviously still needs to be charged. So we have a decent power setup to make that happen can build our batteries himself. So we have a total of 400 amp hours of lithium ion battery and to keep that charged we use both a DC to DC charger and we have solar on the roof. Obviously in the winter we lean slightly more towards relying on the DC to DC charger but the solar is there and it does obviously trickle feed in for us on those sunny days as well and it's a, it's a godsend in the summer. So between the DC to DC and the solar and the occasional campsite when we need one, that is more than enough with the 400 amp hours for me to be charging this daily, Cam to be charging his laptop daily, and us to not have to worry about power for charging like devices, cameras, phones, etc, etc. 
So I think the power setup we have is one that I'd recommend and one that I'm really happy with. Uh, we really, really don't find ourselves like wanting in that department. In terms of actually charging it as well, you might have seen on my van tour video and if not, then there's going to be a card up here. So yeah, do go and check out the van tour. But I have a separate area for the laptops just in a little pullout cupboard that I've got down here. So in this pullout cupboard, we have a slot to fit my laptop and a slot to fit Cam's laptop, as well as the fast charge cables. Both of our laptops are able to charge from a USB-C to USB-C cable, which again, really useful. It means they don't need the inverter because the inverter can also be a little juicy if you have to charge through the inverter all the time. So that can all go in here along with loads of the rest of our like tech things. So I think as well as having a laptop with a decent battery, a decent power setup itself, you actually need somewhere safe that you can put your laptop to charge it. And I'm really glad we considered that while doing the build before we actually came out on the road, because otherwise I think I would just have like fear of breaking my laptop all the time, rather than just having somewhere safe it can slot into after finishing a day of work. So I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to tell you about. So I really hope you found this a little bit informative or enjoyable, or at least it's giving you an insight into what working on the road is actually like. I hope. <laughs> so yeah, if, you, if you've liked it, please do stick around. Um, if you've got any other questions about what this is like, then chuck them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer you. And I'll hope to see you on my usual vlog, which will be coming out on Sunday. So until then, talk to you soon.